What does the research tell us about the use of direct behavior rating, DBR, to measure behavioral progress? One example of a behavior progress monitoring tool which has been developed over the past 15 years is something called direct behavior rating. Um, direct behavior rating is essentially the old homeschool notes or daily behavior report cards. Uh, these have been in schools for uh, literally decades. There are books and there were classes on, on homeschool notes in the 1960s and 1970s. So this isn't a new technology at all. Uh, what DBR do are take the old homeschool notes, so the old unhappy face, neutral face, smiley face, and try to instrumentize and proceduralize them in a way so that those actual um, ratings become outcome data that somebody can utilize. Um, my particular research team, along with Sandy Shapulius at the University of Connecticut, have been looking at these particular tools over the past oh, now 15 or so years. And what we found is that when you use some very particular um, um, technology, so for example, moving over to a 10-point scale rather than an old three or a five-point scale, when you target on very specific behaviors, for example, academic engagement, disruption, and respect, worded in, in a particular manner, and when you do these ratings immediately following a particular period of time, so at the end of math class or at the end of the morning activities or at the very end of the day, uh, the ratings can get within about 10 to 15 percent of systematic direct observation ratings. Now, that means they're not as accurate as the actual behavior. These are, of course, a combination of the teacher perception and the child's behavior. But you're able to collect them over and over and over and over and over again, which results in us being able to have 5, 10, 15 data points per phase rather than what we've been traditionally doing, looking at three or four or five data points and those being very, very high stakes data points. Um, one of the other attractive features of DBR is that they really take the teacher perception in mind. Social behavior is an interesting concept. It's not just is the child misbehaving, but it's also is the person working with the child perceiving that as misbehavior. If the person isn't annoyed by the activity, if the teacher isn't annoyed by a particular activity, it's not annoying behavior. I mean, it might be very frustrating to somebody else, but for that individual teacher, it doesn't represent a social behavior problem. And so DBR allows us to capture both the teacher perception and a proxy of the child's actual behavior itself. Uh, obviously, the most attractive element of DBR, beyond that they are uh, reliable and valid for this particular purpose, is that they're incredibly feasible. Um, training for DBR takes about 15 or 20 minutes. There are online training videos which teachers can watch, they can learn about DBR, and they can go through a rating. So it's very easy to train teachers to do this. It's also incredibly easy for teachers to do it on a daily basis. I mean, it literally takes as much time to pull out the piece of paper as it does to rate engagement, disruption, and respect. And so it can be an incredibly easy way for the teacher to collect data in a non-invasive fashion. You don't have anybody coming to the room and changing people's behavior. You don't have to have the teacher go through an elaborate process or sit down and do a long rating scale. And so it's a very, very easy method.